welcome to uh, another edition, which is episode... Which episode is it? I never get it in my head before we start. 2,107. I think that that might have been the last one. I think maybe I didn't edit it on the page before I started the show. But either way, <laughs> welcome. I'll get better at it eventually. I've been working on... um kind of like my my memory skill is 2107 with an app called Elevate which I highly recommend um I've I've had a fairly good time of it so far kind of like I think I started uh when would have it been it it was back when I was I was traveling back from Germany I think I I think I may may have been traveling back from Hungary so I did the world athletics and that was like three weeks of, I'm going to say like very limited uh, intellectual activity. To to put it simply, I'm going to say there was a lot of time spent kind of like running around, just just doing this and that and fixing equipment and things going wrong and just all sorts. So then in the time surrounding that, it was mostly just being out on the streets in Budapest which is a wonderful city. I fucking love Budapest. Why can't we be more like them, eh? Why can't we be more like them? I want to make a change. It'd be out in the streets of Budapest getting drunk and <laughs> losing lots of money at the same time. But kind of just, you know, <sighs> getting all sorts of different food. Like there's lots of variety there. All sorts of different types of beer. Having some very unique experiences. Can't wait to go go back. I mean, this year, with my whole uh, trying to gain my financial freedom, New Year's resolution, I'm gonna have to be slightly more, slightly more sensible, as it were. But yeah, so we we did a lot of that, a lot of drinking, a lot of going out, all of that sort of stuff. And so, when I got to the airport. On the way back, I think I was transiting through Germany. I decided I'm going to try out this Elevate app, which I've seen plenty of people use. I feel like I had used it in the past, but there's always this thing with these learning apps. They they always want to make sure it's as difficult as humanly possible to use the free tier, despite having like 19 million advertisements per per lesson. They'll always make it as difficult as possible. Duolingo is the only one who I think does it correctly because you you can i mean they give you bonuses you you can do small little practices and that will allow you more more hearts in duolingo's case to survive more lessons so realistically there's no point paying for it but people do because they like it and i think a lot of these other apps that kind of mess around with trapping people making sure that they can't use the app in an efficient way should should be more like that because they likely don't get many subscribers because there's no there's no proof of concept essentially that's what you need you need pre- proof of concept you need to say this is why you should be paying for this because we actually give you an opportunity to learn or an opportunity to do, do whatever this app is kind of aimed towards and you know our our pay tier is your where your bonuses live where all of the good shit is. Like, there's good shit on the free free tier, but the paid tier is like, you know, your royalty now. Instead, a lot of apps just kind of make you pay for bare functionality. Although Elevate, I came back to once they stopped doing that shit, so well done, Elevate. Very good you. And I've been using it uh, a good couple of weeks on end. I mean, I think that was like several months ago now. But my streak is a couple of weeks because I lost track at one point. And I think it's actually had a genuinely good effect. My memory skill has gone up a little bit. Being someone who has amnesia, that's always quite nice to see. Quite uplifting when you're able to do these memory challenges and actually pass them. That's why I started learning how to program, learning how to code, is it was a mental a mental exercise to help me try to make associations again 
after the incident back in 2016. Because I, I basically, I had, um, if you're new to the show and you don't know the story, I had quite a serious illness um, and nearly died. It's always fun. Um, I, I was very, very close. I, I fainted like in the middle of Luton, having just started university. And it was because of neutropenia and anemia, a combination of both and low platelet counts. I got free. I got a fucking dragon ball with this one. All sorts of like basically poor blood measurements. My body wasn't creating what it should have been creating properly. And because I spent so long in essentially a deoxygenated state where I had you know very limited red blood cells to actually keep my body functioning correctly, I suffered with amnesia afterwards and still do have pretty bad memory. Um, but it's one of those things where it's kind of like, it takes, according to most literature, like 15 years to kind of like recover fully from it because that's quite a... It's quite a damaging state for your cerebral. Um, but, you know, if you can kind of like, if you can get things activated, as it were, if you can get your brain moving, get it pumped up, then it will start to make associations again. And maybe you get into a more useful, lucid state a lot quicker. And so, I, you know, I started coding. Um and I still do to this day. And it eventually birthed certain broadcast because these programming skills mean that I'm able to develop different devices for the broadcast industry, certain broadcast Ringo, my comms unit, and certain broadcast Tally Tubby. Yes, it is genuinely called that, which is the system that runs the lights in the studio. And so um, highly recommend Elevate. I've had uh, a good time with it so far because I've been on this stint this year. I'm trying to keep all of my streaks in like perfect stride. So my Duolingo, because I'm trying to learn Esperanto at the moment, which is kind of like this made up language. Um, and, you know, I'm using programming apps to kind of just keep myself sharp and get new skills to do different things. Like RF is something that I'm working on more at the moment because my work um, has a need for that. And so it's kind of stepping up to the plate a little bit with, I can potentially do that kind of thing. Because the Tally itself is an RF system, but it runs on Wi-Fi RF rather than uh, s- stream across an entire field RF and they, they work on different devices. So you need to know different things. And, you know, programming is just this jungle of make one wrong move and you're done. (laughs) You're completely done. Uh, In today's news, an autonomous robot that can detect and fix potholes. God, it's about time, isn't it? Um, Yeah, there's this. uh, It looks like one of those Tesla things. What is that called? Cybertruck. It's literally just like, slam together stainless steel body panels on wheels but it's uh, supposedly going to be helping us to get rid of the million potholes that we have in England the machine is called Ares or the autonomous autonomous road repair system and it can identify and characterise potholes and cracks using artificial intelligence it can then automatically fill them up to keep out surface water, which otherwise can seep through, causing further damage. How's this for an idea, yeah? How about we also use it to stop our fucking wheels from blowing up all the time? I swear to God, we are the slowest country when it comes to stuff like that. Besides South America, but, you know, or India. But, you know, for a country that's kind of revered for its driving, maybe we could be slightly better at looking after our roads, eh? Should it be successful, Aries could save time and money identifying potholes that could worsen due to neglect and the, and reduce the disruption they cause to motorists. The robot was developed by tech company Robot Robotis 3D and academics at the University of Liverpool 
in partnership with Hertfordshire County Council. Hey, that's near, but that's nearby where I am. <laughs> Maybe I'll see it on the road at some point. Um, yes, yeah, so that's kind of cool. It'd be nice to see AI kind of being used for these, um, what would you call it, domestic problems that we have. I do wonder when it's going to get really serious and we're going to start seeing, like, you know, AI police officers. God, that would be terrible, won't it? Can you imagine something that's able to kind of, like, instantly identify you and just know what you've been up to? You've got 900 speeding tickets and this AI police car, completely autonomous, comes up behind you and just rams you off the road. I might be fantasizing this ever so slightly, but I, I feel like at some point it might happen. I, I hope we don't get to the point where we end up like China State, because because that would be bad. But you know, something small, something you know, just general. Maybe it could knock on people's houses and give out fucking disturbance notices. <laughs> you know, something something that other people don't want to do as such. I think the world is 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 program as oysters at the moment, and as long as the resources are there, we can pretty much do anything with them. And it, it's not like we don't have plenty of time on our hands to do stuff like this. With you know so many things apparently being freed up by it in the first place, I just hope that it doesn't end up taking. Jobs. I mean, that's the one thing that people usually get paranoid over, isn't it? Is the idea of a robot uprising where all of us will become completely obsolete. What are we looking at now? Paramore. We were talking about this briefly yesterday. So they kind of like disappeared off the map for a little bit, went on a little holiday and everyone was kind of worried for they had basically just split up and they, they would be gone forever. That isn't the case. Don't worry. The upcoming new chapter for the pop-punk icons Paramore comes after fans were left concerned that news of a breakup may be imminent following their social media presence being wiped clean. Last month, the trio, comprised of frontwoman Hayley Williams, guitarist Taylor York, and drummer Zach Farrow, took down all posts and images from their ex, Facebook, and Instagram profiles while their official website displayed a 404 error message. I've been there before. Shortly beforehand, the band also said there was a level of uncertainty about their future following the completion of their This Is Why tour and recently fulfilled obligations to their label. Now, however, it has been reported by Variety that the band have no plans to call it quits anytime soon, but instead they are looking for a fresh start online since parting ways with Atlantic. So, at the moment, it's looking very likely that there's going to be another errors type situation so taylor swift went off and basically started re-recording all of her albums so 1989 taylor's version is a literal response to her recording label holding the intellectual property for her entire back catalog and so to kind of make her way around this and make sure that she continues ownership of her own songs her own recordings she basically just had to go and redo it, go and re-record. And it's quite surprising because, you know, it sounds like the original album, but it's kind of like a weird contractual obligation that you have to go through as such, or an obligation out of contract, but it does actually need to be fully re-recorded because ultimately the original recordings are owned by the record label. And so... Now that Paramore is essentially done with new recordings, so this is why is kind of like their final album. And that's where it's going to stay for the moment. As far as we're aware, as far as they've let off, they now want to go and re-record their previous albums so that they can keep ownership instead of Atlantic and Fueled by Ramen having the rights to everything. So haley has gone and set up her own recording label now, which is a ballsy move to make. And 
now we just need to kind of like sit back and see which album they redo first. And in a similar vein, they'll kind of be changing a lot of stuff that already exists. Not that they haven't already been quite open about doing that beforehand. Uh, Especially with, I think, what was it, like a year ago, when the original album, or the original self-titled album, Paramore, had a little change to its album artwork, if anybody remembers. The original artwork was the three of them, the three band members at the time of the recording, kind of on this, like, interestingly lit uh, backdrop. And that was... Hayley Williams, that was Taylor York. And her ex, whose name I forget. And something happened, there was some drama, and then the album artwork was officially changed. So if you went on Spotify, iTunes, they had actually changed the album artwork to just Hayley Williams wearing the Grow Up uh, jean jacket. And so they, they've been known to do things similar to this before. And so we just need to see what they do now. This is the Callum Sutton Show. Um, moving on to uh, Brewdog. They've, for some reason, gone and got rid of their living wage and decided to go for minimum wage, completely neglecting how that entire company and foundation started. They've apparently turned out, what was it, a t- had a £24 million loss last year. And because of that, they now need to basically make all of their employees minimum wage. Which, to me, sounds like an absolutely bullshit excuse. Especially seeing that, A, I know full well that their sales figures are pretty good. I I looked into it. They were actually higher last year than the year before. So any loss that they had, it was a continual loss that they could have strategized better, like, way beforehand. And, you know, their entire company stands for employee uh, trust, respect, and, you know, actually making sure that they're doing things properly. That's why they're the only beer brand in the world that makes a huge fuss about the fact that they have their Planet First beer. So, you know, just disappointed to see that, Brewdog. A big old F you. Also, Rimmel London has uh, had one of the adverts banned for playing on young girls and securities. It was a very simple one, kind of back-to-school advert with a promotion for 25% off multitasker, concealer, and other Rimmel faves. Rimmel faves. And and I don't know how it's just that one advert in all of them that kind of got banned, because I'm sure they've had uh, plenty, absolutely plenty, of adverts that have played on girls' insecurities in the past. But it, it just reminded me of these adverts on TikTok for, like, the fucking jaw-strengthening things that you chew on to make your jawline sharper. And, and it makes me wonder why there isn't more strict advertising standards in social media, because there's plenty on TV, and there's plenty on print. Like, iPo does a good job with all of that sort of stuff. So I really want to know why we haven't gotten a little bit further in making sure that social media is given the exact same kind of attention by advertising authorities. I know it's difficult because, you know, you're looking at a global standard. But surely somebody, surely somebody can do something about that, right? Because I feel like a lot of the advertising I see online is not only trash and really fucking annoying, but also... A lot of it, like, would never be allowed on regular mediums. I'm not saying that these jaw strengthening ones would particularly be banned on regular mediums, but they are definitely trash, and they do piss me off, because they're usually given these stupid taglines like, oh, your girlfriend will leave you if you don't use this. And it's like, really? Really, is that what we're going for? Because a lot of it is kind of just, like, basic uh, appearance shaming. And it's like, right, how how do we allow so much of this? How? And and who is behind this as well? I don't know. They they, they just 
If I'm being honest, they seem like real pricks. This is the Callum Sutton Show from Opposition Studios. Hey, guess who's um, Getty famous now, of all things? Uh, your truly has been spotted in multiple Getty Images photos, um, mostly from the World Athletics. But it was definitely strange because people started sending me links to these photos that had me uh, getting ready to put one of the wire cams in the air. So kind of just on the on the track where they did the sprinting for the World Athletics. And I saw them taking photos of us. I didn't realise that's where it would eventually end up. So now I need to see if I can capitalise on this. <laughs> because they're selling the licences for like $400 each. I didn't give them any consent to take my photo. I find it interesting that they've taken my photo, but I didn't give them any consent. So, you know, all I ask is... Mm, a ninety percent cut of every sale that you make, and then I'll be happy. Then I then I'll be when I'll shut my mouth, and I won't try to cause any trouble. I think for that is, you know that that's a good response, right? If you don't get any consent to take someone's photo, and all they expect is ninety five percent of the gross profit, I think that's a good, that's a pretty good result. So yeah, call me. Um, coming back to our mail sack, choo choo. <laughs> with our responses sorry choo choo um we've got multiple ones coming in from the silent quitting so um not responding to work tests texts after 5 isn't quite in quitting that's having clear boundaries um yeah i w- i would agree with that i mean i think it's also very important to kind of like take control of your own sanity as well like if you are somebody who compulsively comes back to work texts after work, then, you know, it it might be good to kind of, like, question why exactly you feel the need to do that. Because most workplaces, for the most part, here in the UK, won't respond in a bad way to it. But you kind of have to test your waters first. If they do respond in a bad way, then it might be kind of like a preempting of... Hmm. Maybe maybe keep your eyes on other jobs as well, because you don't want that kind of like toxic, you need to be available for us at every second of every day. Because ultimately, you know, you need time to let your mind wind down, as it were. You need your, you need time for your calm. Um, quiet quitting makes sense for the most overworked and most overpaid generation to date. Yeah, looked at the numbers as well, and... I don't think it's really any secret that we are mostly, you know, millennial generation and Gen Z, the most underpaid generation to date when you take into account inflation. Also coming in from Terry, I'm 42 and something in me just broke after turning 40 near the end of the pandemic. I actually admitted to my boss this year that my only goal is to be an employee in good standing on January 1st. Am I owned by my company, or have I lost all sense of self? You know what, I I wouldn't say it out loud. That's, that's the one thing. I think we all kind of like aim for greatness, as it were. Not necessarily spiritual or religious, religious greatness, but just a general greatness. We want to be the best version of ourselves. And if we're invested in our work, then that also means that we want to be you know, the best we can for ourselves at work. But, you know, it it can just be very difficult sometimes. Like, is it that you want to be in good standing specifically with your employer on January 1st? Or is it that you want to be in good standing as somebody in your industry on January 1st? Because I I would go with the latter. Like, I want to, you know, engineer stuff and do good work on set but that doesn't mean that I should be dealing with anything else that comes my way, whether that be kind of like harassment, abuse. You know, you should be the best, at, you know, kind of like if it was to be cross-compared across multiple companies, not just a singular one. So if it's a case of, you know, your work environment requires you to do things that you're uncomfortable with, um, but never stated it in the first place. If you've kind of just been duped into doing things that 
you're uncomfortable with, in in that case, you shouldn't be saying that I want to be in good standing as such to your employers because they're exploiting you. They're making, you know, they're making bad use out of you. But if it's something as simple as, you know, I don't arrive on time every day and I want to get better at that, I think that's a pretty normal thing. Like, we all want to kind of overcome our little flaws. I know that I definitely have them as well. But I think that it also needs mutual respect on either side. Like, I've I've worked in places where critical timekeeping has been very much something that you can get absolutely fucking bollocked for. And that creates an incredibly toxic environment that I wouldn't expect anybody to want to do better in. Because, you know, you've got to allow a bit of um a bit of swing as as such between your contractual obligations and leniency. Because ultimately thinking too much like that, thinking in this really time critical sense or, you know, whether it be task critical, for example, has led to people being killed in the past. Like, you know, the Domino's drivers who had the 30 minute guarantee, uh, and multiple of them got into like really serious collisions because they were pressured by the company. That is a outstanding example of why you should, you know, really just make sure that you kind of keep it in mind that ultimately you are human. You do have flaws and that's perfectly okay. And I think anybody would be stupid to disagree with that. Saturnshow.net.